be to God. Amen. <coughs> we have a um, lovely guest here. There you go. There you go. Oh, praise God. Amen. So, like Pastor Jay said, we've covered the last two services. Amen. The story of Christmas with the, the wise men. I came here today to, to church with three of my sons. Praise God, the wise men. Amen. If your sons are not wise, then what's the point? Praise be to God. Amen. So I, I thank God, amen, that we talked about the gold. And just to recap quickly, the gold um, represented sustaining. Amen. Uh, now unto him who's able to do abundantly beyond all we ask or think. And Sister Bing was up here last night, and sorry, last week. Maybe last night as well. Praise God. She was telling us how, amen, the employees want to move house to be where she is. Yeah. Amen. And, and, um, and if that doesn't persuade her, we give her an Apple computer. And, and if that doesn't persuade her, we give her lots of money. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And that was the gold. Now, wonderfully, we have um, Noel coming with his wife and to, to represent the, the, the frankincense. And what the frankincense we talked about, I don't know if you heard the message, no. The frankincense represents us. When you fall away from the gold, you need to recognize where you're going wrong. And when you don't talk to your wife, then something is going wrong. If this keeps cooking, um, um, is, is there another mic? Praise God, this keeps. Yeah, yeah it keeps going off and on. Praise God, yes, yeah, better, yeah. <laughs> and um, you need to see where you're going wrong. Yeah. And if you don't see where you're going wrong with your wife, yeah. then something is wrong. And we really thank God that we talked about the frankincense as the light shines on us that we may see where we're going wrong in our lives. Yeah. Amen. And do something about it. Yeah. And to confess and to say sorry. Mm. Like last week I was sharing that, if you remember, you don't remember, but the radiator, my radiator was damaged. When my wife threw the radiator at me one day because she was really upset with me. <laughs> Amen. And praise God. And Jesus kept our marriage wonderfully because we stayed in the light. So there's the frankincense. So it's wonderful hearing you say that because it is so serious. If we don't come into the light, many people lose the marriages and they lose the relationship with the children and they lose the relationships in church because they just won't say sorry. And so what a wonderful testimony to get up and say sorry because that keeps you in the church and it keeps you and your wife together and it keeps you and your children together. Amen. So an awesome example of frankincense. So what is myrrh? Well, myrrh is the only one that is actually a, a medicine. Myrrh is from, it's, it's a thorn tree, really sharp thorns, a gum tree, and it's used strictly for medicine from serious wounds. Serious ones. But the ma, I think, is the precious of all of the three. Because the ma is only given to you, that's why it's last. If you use the gold, look how you're thankful what Jesus has done for you. Eh? No boasting. Jerry driving the bus. Amen? Yeah, I, I remember Jerry, because the Lord gave him a prophecy about it. And he came running out. Running down the road, Elijah, Elijah, crying tears, jumped to me and cuddled me with an appreciation I have never felt before. Honestly, it's never happened to me before. Someone's ran down the street. So there's the gold. Praise God. And when you use the gold, reach your potential in God. Get the best of your marriage. But if it doesn't like no, I'm going to tell everybody. This is on YouTube now. I'm going to tell everybody that I'm sorry. Because I value you. Praise God. You mean everything to me. And if you can use both the gold and the frankincense, it produces more naturally. But if you don't use the gold, and if you don't use the frankincense, I never say sorry, it's your fault. Then the mud doesn't get produced. And so what happens when serious wounds come to you, which they will, which they will, you won't, like Dennis was saying, find any comfort 
And so ma, amen, is the most precious of all. And so we're going to look at, about the ma and the story of Christmas and people who had it. And you could tell that they had it from those who don't have it. Hey, praise be to God. Amen. So the Christmas story, we have the nativity play, don't we? Amen. We were children. Everybody wants to play Mary. I don't know if you played Mary before. No, you didn't play Mary. Did you ever play Joseph? Pastor Jay? Oh, your dad had a church. He had a church. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Everybody, I want to be, who wants to be the baby Jesus? Yeah. Are you the baby Jesus? <coughs> Amen. Praise God. Or some people want to be the three kings. Amen. But sometimes all the roles have gone, then you've got the donkey. You love to be the donkey today. You be the donkey today. You don't mind being the donkey, do you? Exactly. Praise God. Amen. So that's what makes the nativity story real. What people do, they, they, they look at the story of Jesus, but they don't see themselves inside of it. And, and God, you don't choose the part you play in this nativity play. You don't choose it. God chooses it for you. Amen. You may well be Mary. You may well Amen. Praise be to God. Be one of the three wise men. Pray. You may be headed. Amen. God has got a role for you in the Timothy story. We're going to look this in to see today if you can see <coughs> your role in that play. And why is it important? Because all of us contribute to the story of Jesus being born. You understand that? It's the kings that come that show how amazing Jesus is. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. So let's look at the, the four categories of people inside the story of, of Jesus. Firstly, you have the category of people that are left out of the Christmas story. The book of Matthew, amen, is, is the only account, amen, of the disciples that actually talked about the nativity. Luke didn't, I'm sorry, but Mark didn't talk about it. John didn't talk about it. Only Matthew. Now Luke did, but Luke wasn't a disciple. Luke was a Greek doctor that came later. So Matthew talked about it. And Matthew, amen, talks about Joseph. He doesn't talk about the angel talking to Mary. He doesn't talk about John the Baptist's um, parents, Anna Zacharias. He doesn't talk about, amen, going to the temple. He doesn't talk about Anna and Simeon. All of these people are left out of the story. Wow. Why did Matthew do that? Matthew is a, a wonderful disciple of God. In showing us that, praise God, that in Christmas time, in the story of Jesus, many of us get left out of things by good people. Not bad people. Good people will let you down. You will feel that you've not. Why have I not got a husband? Why have I not got a good wife? Praise be to God. Why don't I have a good job? Why am I ill? And why am I not healthy like Brother Neil? Amen. Praise God. So many people feel that they're left out of the blessings of God. That's the Christmas story. Matthew left these people out. But when you have myrrh, Tima, that medicine that applies to these sharp wounds that are caused by thorns, you know that Jesus is not going to leave you out. You know, you, you know. And this is why he raised up Luke. Why the name Luke? Because the blessings are looking for you. Do you understand that? <coughs> Dr. Luke, when you have mud inside of you, amen. I may be ill, but I know Jesus is looking for me. Amen. amen. Praise be to God. I may not have, amen. I don't know who's got husbands and wives here. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I may not have a wife, but I know Jesus is looking for me. Amen. amen. Like Dennis said, you feel comforted when you have more. Praise God. In fact, guess what? You're even happy when you're left out. Jesus said, there's one that bears witness of me. 
I seek not the honor that comes from man, but the honor that only comes from God. I know Jesus is, remember Luke, Jesus is looking for me. My blessing is looking for me. Amen. Amen. But you've got to have more. If you don't have more. Amen. It said this to blind men. The blind men were crying out. And Jesus walked past them. They walked past them. If you don't have more. Jesus. Can you, sorry, can you? So, you know, the camera is going to pick up the, the sound. Sorry. Sorry. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. And, and, and Jesus walked past them. Amen. That's why the gold, the frankincense, and the ma is so important to us. Amen. Praise be to God. The joy of Christmas is this. It's not that you get presents. It's not that you're accepted by everybody. It's that you have the ma inside of you. The gold, the frankincense, but the ma. That when you're left out, you know Jesus is going to find you. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. That's what makes Christmas special. So for all these people that are left out, Isaiah 61 said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To those people that are left out. And we're the people that have more. Because we don't mind being left out. We don't mind. Because we know that Jesus is looking for us. Amen. You know you feel that you can have your head lifted up high. In your sorrow. What did they call Jesus? Man of sorrows. Man of sorrows. But he knew that he was going to be given a name. That was above every other name you see the ma inside oh praise be to God so that's the first category of those who have ma the second category of those who have ma is actually those inside of the nativity story amen let's see the babies the babies that were killed the babies that were stabbed through and the mothers that saw it it said this Rachel was weeping for her children and she would not be Comforted because they were not. Now at Christmas time, the Christmas message, amen, there's those people that will not feel comforted this Christmas. They won't feel comfort. And you know why? Because they don't have myrrh. Praise be to God. Amen. And what a sad thing is when you lose sight that gee, you don't know what's going to happen to you. Amen. But it's not what happens to you. It's what you have. Not what happens to you. Praise be to God. And when you don't realize that Jesus is there, whatever is happening to you, only mud makes you feel like that. Amen. You feel a joy and a comfort and a peace that passes all understanding. That's what mud does to you. Amen. That you always feel comforted. And so if you come across people. Or if you reach something in your life this year. That you just can't find comfort. Remember the Christmas story. Remember the gold that's there for you. That's there. The abundance of blessings. Now unto him who's able to do abundantly beyond all that you ask or think. You've got to have a relationship with him. You've got to reach for that gold. Amen. And if you will reach for the gold. Or like, no, stand up with the courage of applying the frankincense to you. The myrrh will be there. Amen? And you will be able to comfort those people that are not comforted. You understand? It's a wonderful experience when I'm out at night times. Some crack people in crack houses coming out and holding on to me and kissing me. I think, why is this person kissing me? Because they feel comfort. Why do they feel comfort? Because I've got some myrrh inside of me. Amen. So that's the babies, Rachel's children. But then we go on to Brother Simeon. Remember, this is the Timothy play. It's real. This story is real. 
This story is real inside of here. Simeon. Amen. <coughs> he was told, when you grab hold of Jesus, when you take hold of him, you're going to die. That was the prophecy to him. Wow, what did he do? And he knew that he was going to die. But he grabbed the hold of the baby Jesus. That's what my helps you do. When you're given the worst news in your life, amen, you grab hold of Jesus. Have you come here today to look at Jesus? Or have you come now to grab hold of him? <laughs> There's many that come to look, but that's not enough. It's not enough to come and look at Jesus. It's not enough. You've got to come to grab hold of him. That when you're told the worst news, your worst, Job said this, the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me. Job 3.28 but because he had man inside of him, Job fell on his knees and he worshipped and he held on. He grabbed a hold of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then Simeon began to comfort Mary. Look at that. What man does, man makes you realize that your suffering is less than everybody else's. Amen. When you've got man inside of you, amen, you're just looking to comfort other people. Look at that. Look how special that gift is. Yes. Look at what Simeon did. Oh, beautiful story. And then we come on to my favorite. This is my favorite. Guess what I'm going to say? Not in those who are in my fellowship. Guess the next person's name. Anyone? When I was going this week to minister to my friends, Jewish friends, and, and spend time with them, praise God, and I, I'm going there and there's a little girl in front of me taking to school. And she's saying, Mommy, 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 Mommy. To look at me behind. Why are you looking at me? Praise God. And, and the mom can tell when I'm off. Stop staring at him. Praise God. But she keeps doing it. And she's looking back. And on the back of her, she's got written, Anna. And we're going to talk about it. Anna. As I was on my way to talk to the Jews, and Anna was amazing. Anna was the widow. Was the widow. She had lost her husband. She not only lost her husband, she had nothing to eat. Every day she was in the temple praying and fasting. No one's looking after her, but she don't care. Remember I told you, 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 you when you're left out? When you've got mad, it doesn't matter if people in the house of God. Look at this lovely food. There was no food in the house of God to give to Anna. But she didn't care. Because she had more inside of her. Yeah. She knew that Jesus is coming. Mm. And when she saw Jesus, what did she do? She forgot all about a widowhood. And she told, it says this, all of Jerusalem that Jesus was there. Mm. Wow! And that's how valuable mud is. Mm. Amen. It will make you Totally forget everything that's going on in your life that's sad. In mm. fact, quite the opposite. That all you want to do is to tell. And many people have stopped someone in the street to tell them about Jesus today. Mm. Honestly, this is not condemnation to you. How many of us today have stopped someone to tell them about Jesus? <laughs> you see that, Ma? She lost her husband. Mm. And she's telling everybody about Jesus. Wow. And that, and look how amazing this woman there. People don't know this. Look at this, how amazing this is. This woman there, and that's why when I was on the way to tell the Jewish people about Jesus, it was little Anna. See that widow? See the widow? The spirit of her. We are compassed about. We're so great a cloud of witnesses. They are watching. Amen. As you're on your way, in your sorrow, in your affliction. To tell people about Jesus. Why? Because God had been so merciful to me. And he's given me some ma. I've only got a little ma. I haven't got a lot. It's only a little but it's enough. For me to go on to tell the Jewish people about Jesus. And Anna was there. Mommy, mommy, look at him. He's got some ma. Amen. Amen. 
And this woman was so amazing, did you know? She lived another 33 years, people don't know. You, you, the lady you looked after, how old was she when she died? 104. <clears throat> wow, 104. 104. This lady was 84 when she was at the birth of Jesus. And another 33 years later, 117. People don't know that. And when Jesus was about to die, go on the cross, he was about to go in the temple and turn it upside down. And he was looking at everybody coming in and giving their offerings. And what did he see? He saw the widow with her two mites. What do the two mites represent? The first one that she was there when Jesus was born. And that ma, she's a widow. She has no food. She's all alone. Nobody went with her when she told the Jews about Jesus. Amen. Amen. And she lasted another 33 years. Amen. Second mind. And as Jesus is going to die now, she's still there. Saying, I'm going to be there. Telling people about you from when you're born all the way to your death. I'm going to be faithful to you because I've got some more. Wow. Look how powerful that more is. And Jesus said this about her. She gave more than them all. That's what more will make you do in your widowhood. See the, see, see the play? You see our play? See the room we're in? It's real. The story's real. Ma, amen, will make you do better in your widowhood than everybody else. Oh, wow. Praise God. That's my favorite story. Amen. Praise. Are you going to have two mites to give? Amen. You're going to be there at the bath and you're going to go all the way to <coughs> Because you're going to be comforted. Amen. You're going to never leave God's house. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Come on, saints. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Can't you see the nativity plays real in our lives? It's real in everybody's lives. But the sad thing is that you don't realize how precious the gold, the frankincense, and mud is. Every gift that you see here means nothing without it. If you don't have gold, frankincense, and mark, Apostle Paul said, I meant all things are but dung to the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And I suffer the loss of everything that I might win the gold, the frankincense, and the mark. Praise be to God. Amen. And that's the, the story of the Nativity play. Nearly finished now. Now we're going to go on to the, the people that came after Jesus. Amen. You've got Jesus, our Lord, as he's suffering and he's going to bear the worst pain that ever wants to bear. What does he say in John 6, 16? He says, praise God, I, I will not leave you comfortless. Praise God. I will not leave you comfortless. All Jesus could think about, he's the king of myrrh. It's making everybody have comfort. Amen. Every single person in this room today not one should leave here without feeling comfort. Why? Because that's what Jesus wants to do. The King of Ma desires to give every single person comfort. If you'll only let him do it. Praise be to God. Amen. And there he is on the cross. And the worst pain that you can imagine shaking. Blood coming from all over. Weeing blood. And all he's doing is thinking about the Bible. Amen. He's quoting scripture all the way through. When you've got myrrh, all you want to do is think about the Bible. You know the joy is when people say, I, I think you meditate on the law of the Lord day and night. You can tell when you've got that myrrh because you can't put the Bible down. Amen. Some people can hardly pick it up, Bing. But when you've got myrrh, you can't put it down. You understand that? You cannot put it down. Amen. And there was Jesus showing us the best example of having more. Then you've got Stephen. Amen. There he was dying. And he said his face shone like an angel's. 
Wow. And then praying for the forgiveness of all those who hurt him. Look at what mud does. It makes you think about those people that are hurting you. Do you feel like that when you get hurt? Do we honestly feel like that? No, we don't. And so we need, amen, to, to invest more in more. We need it. Praise be to God. Amen. And then you have the Apostle Paul. Look at Apostle Paul, praise God. In 1 Thessalonians 4, he tells the church to those people that have died, he says, sorrow not. He says to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, Timothy, don't be sorry, but I'm ready to go. Be strong, Timothy. Do your hardness like a good soldier. He tells the Philippian church, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. You see them are. He tells them an axe when they're all crying around him. They're weeping around him. They what do you do to break my heart? This is a great thing that I'm going to God. Praise be to God. And the last one, he tells the church, everything that you see is done compared to the excellency of losing your life for Christ. Amen. And John says in the Revelations, from henceforth now, because murder has been offered to you, it wasn't offered like it was before. When Jesus came, he's offering that myrrh to the world. And we live in a, in a life today, everybody's bitter and angry about death and about sorrow. Remember the wounds, the sharp thorns in the, in the myrrh tree. Amen. They don't like it. They end up hating and resenting and they divorce. They walk out on their wives. Amen. They war against Israel. Israel wars against Palestine. Amen. It will never end. Praise God, because they don't want anything to do with the true message of Christmas. Praise be to God. And John said, blessed is everybody who dies in the Lord. Amen. So that's the people after the Timothy prayer. <coughs> praise God. Here we're going to end now. And thank God. Amen. For, praise God, the people in Viva Stream. I've been thinking about uh, his wife, Eden. All this weekend, I remember very much so because I didn't know that Eden was ill. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. It was a, a big shock to me before she. I didn't know. Sometimes my wife, we don't talk a lot about these things. And I, I didn't know. Praise be to God. And and um, and I I I I remember of all the people that greeted me here, I always felt the most love from her. Honestly, so tender. When she'd say my name, like, man, this person really likes me. He doesn't even know me. It always touched my heart. Every time she came in, and I didn't know she had the cancer. And then she was in using her ma to comfort me. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Not even realizing maybe she's doing it. Praise be to God. Maybe not even realizing she's doing it. And then we have Sister Nora's dad. Amen? Praise God. You, you, you couldn't sit here without him chasing you the whole, the whole evening. Would you like something to eat? Why are you not eating? Come on, you must eat. Hello, brother. And, he, and no matter how many times I would explain it to him. It, 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 no, next week. It's the same thing as it was last week. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. These people, they're not dead. I am the resurrection and the life. Here's my. Here's my. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me shall never die. You know how alive they are? You, 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 this is me not making up. I'm walking at night times and I feel the presence of Eden. I feel their greeting. I feel Sister Nona's dad come and greet me. Jesus said, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen. They're watching and rooting and being around us, but we just can't see them. Elisha said, Lord, open up the servants' eyes that they may see there's more with us than there goes against us. That's what Ma makes you see, praise be to God, the joy of their lives. Amen. Praise be to God. There was somebody else. Amen. Praise be to God. And let my son Thomas, who lost his son, Amen. Praise God. Raphael, Malachi, 
Amen. Went through a lot of operations and a lot of pain. A lot of broken bones and things were happening to him. And a lot of pain and sorrow. Praise be to God. But the, the joy, Thomas, eh? That we have as God ministered to us about his life. You understand that? Praise be to God. And that's what Mark does. Mark gives you hope when there is no hope. Praise be to God. Amen. So we are a, a blessed people. We are a blessed people. And as I said, I don't know what role the nativity play that you have to play. I don't know whether you're Simeon or you're Anna. Yes? Praise be to God. Or whether you're one of the three kings. Amen? So all I do know is this. If you have Mark, you are famous. You are famous. Why? Because you allow Christ to come in your midst. And that's what Mark does. And that's what makes Christmas real. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Praise God. And, and so... Just to finish, I'll, I'll show you the role that I've got. God showed me my role. Amen. You, you can find your own role yourself. But I know my role. I'm the mistletoe. You're a mistletoe. Praise God. Everybody holds up. You know the mistletoe? The mistletoe. Do they have that in the Philippines? Yeah. You have the mistletoe. you got to kiss someone. You have the mistletoe. Amen. Praise be to God. Well, the mistletoe, it makes people kiss each other. There's not a lot of kissing going on here. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul tells the church, greet one another with a holy kiss. Amen. And I'll kiss Pastor David. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Why am I in the mistletoe? Well, I'll show you something, okay? I, I, was, I was at the hospital this week. And they made me go to the acute department and um, the surgeon came in and and um, you know I've been having trouble. And the surgeon, the surgeon said it's got to be cut off. And they're so concerned about it, about blood poisoning, and the swelling is really bad. They really said maybe Monday your big toe's got to be cut off. Oh. Amen. You see, you're laughing. Good, I'm glad you're laughing. This is laughing. Praise God. Amen. And I'm looking. Wow, look at Christmas. Mistletoe. The <laughs> missing toe. It's God in Christmas. Amen. Look at that. Amen. That now, forever, I'll be missing a toe. But guess what? My name ends with a kiss. My name ends with a kiss. And what does that mean? Wherever I go, I'm going to make the people of God. What? You laugh. Yeah, you laugh. Go on. Kiss each other. Make the Jew and the Palestine. Kiss each other. Make the Catholics and the Protestants kiss each other. The whole world has to kiss each other. Sam too said this. And here's the king of mistletoe. He said this, kiss the sun. Lest he be angry with you and you perish from the way. And God, the world doesn't realize that he's very angry that we stop kissing each other. We've got to start kissing each other. Praise be to God. Amen. So I thank God for the pain and the bleeding and the toll that's going to go missing. Amen. Because I'm like Scrooge. I'm like Scrooge. For the rest of my Christmas is spent on out. Amen. My job is going to make the people of God kiss one another. Amen. And then we truly understand Christmas. God bless you, Pastor James. Sometimes we forget that uh, we are in the one family.